Hi guys. All right, I'm gonna show you some clips here in this video of um, putting together this large studio palette. So for the most part, most of my watercolor collection um, are in smaller um, selected palettes. Like this one is my floral and cobalt palette. And it's a mixture of brands, um, Daniel Smith, Jane Davenport, Holbein, um, which is funny because these are also Holbein. Um, Holbein, Van Gogh, PBO, um, and they're all colors that are inspired by the idea of creating floral um, nature inspired paintings. Um, and this is, again, labeled my floral and cobalt palette because I have like um, cobalt blue and um, cobalt violet and cobalt, there's another cobalt in here. I can't find it right now, cobalt teal. Um, along with bright yellows and bright greens and um, a bright orange. So anyway, that's what this palette is for and it serves really well. And a lot of my watercolors are um, sorted in this way, not all of them, but a lot of them. I really, really wanted to have my entire Daniel Smith collection though in one palette. And I had it in a large um, well, hang on, let me get it. Okay, I had it in this large um, palette, which is I think a 48 half pan palette. And I, my collection had outgrown this palette uh, quite a while ago. And I really wanted to put everything in one place. Along with how I'm gonna keep these little small ones, sometimes I wanna just like grab the floral palette and bring it with me when I'm traveling or maybe the muted desert palette or something. Um, and if I'm not gonna be painting at home, other times I'm just working on a small project here at the table and I don't want the entire big palette. I just want a little one. So I am keeping these, I do use them often, but sometimes I just wanna have my entire collection out of one brand like Daniel Smith, which is my favorite. So I created this palette. Now, as we cut away to the clip here, um, you see me sorting through my collection of paints and sorting them in order um, based on the way they're listed on the Daniel Smith sample card, um, which is in a particular order with all the yellows together, all the oranges, all the reds, all the um, going into the violets, and then the blues, and then the teals, and then the greens, and so on and so forth. So I wanted my palette to be the same way so the first thing you see me doing is sorting out all my colors in order according to that sample card. And also doing, I was doing inventory to see which ones I had and I was marking them on the sample card. Then I took the old palette apart and I started placing those pans in the new palette um, interspaced with empty pans for the colors that were not in the 40, old 48 pan palette.
So I would, for instance, um, I started with an empty pan because I didn't have titanium white in the old palette, but I had the Chinese white and the buff. And then I had to have put an empty pan for the Kudakudon yellow and so on and so forth until I filled up the pan. I knew I wanted my metallics at the bottom and I have a couple of rows in between. Now I do have a space in the palette, that's because I ran out of the tack putty adhesive stuff. Um, when I get some more, I'll be putting some more half pans in here. Um, the palette is a plastic palette that had insert trays in it from my friend um, Peg Robinson. She had it, she wasn't using it, it didn't work for her. She said, Do you, would you like it? I said, uh, yes. So she sent it to me. I will find the link for it in the description and list link it in the description below. Um, you can use it with the inserts in it. It holds 33 paints or you can just easily pop the trays out and put half pans or whole pans in it and it holds a lot more paint. I chose to use the adhesive tack, adhesive putty stuff to put the pans in because I can easily pop the pans out if I want to rearrange things a little bit if I add more paints to my collection. If I use something like E6000, I may not be able to um, rearrange paints. So that's why I did it the way I did. Uh, anyway, I really love it. I love the way it turned out. I do have to not only let these dry a couple of more days, but I need to um, uh, cover the color key in a plastic sleeve. I need to make a plastic sleeve for it um, so that it doesn't get wet. And I don't want to cover it in packing tape in case I do want to add colors to my collection. I have spaces to do that. I can cut this up or, or whatever. So um, yeah, I, I really love the way this turned out. I encourage you to um, don't be afraid to DIY um, you know, paint palettes. Um, my, one of my favorite mixing palettes is just a white plate. This is from Target. Yep, it's Target Threshold Salad Plate. <laughs> um, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money on fancy stuff from the art supply store. You can, of course, but you don't have to. Um, this pal this plastic palette's not expensive. So, um, and, and uh, by the way, it has a tray here, which I can use to mix. Um, and then the color key still fits down here. So, and I'm, for the moment, I'm gonna leave this tray in. I may choose to have, because it's still kind of wet, I may choose to have the tray this way and close it so it kind of forces um, the pans down. Um, we'll see, but um, while they're, you know, everything is drying. Um, but anyway, I love the way this turned out. Now, when I was going through my watercolors and paints recently, I did find these four tubes of Holbein, and I don't remember buying them. I don't know why. I don't know why they were not with the other watercolor, so I don't know. So that's weird. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. Go through and, you know, don't be me. Don't have tubes like this that you're just never using colors. You know, I love my Daniel Smith paints because everything sometimes was so spread out and I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna paint. Then I don't know if I need the floral palette or one of the other palettes because I'm not sure what I'm gonna paint. I really just need the selection of my colors so that I can sit and play because I'm not sure what directions I'm gonna go in. And honestly, that happens more often than not. So anyway, think about it. If you wanna make a mega studio palette, this is one way to do it. I hope it gives you some ideas. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And um, there's a lot of ways to support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups. Um, they're all in the video description along with any relevant links. So check it out and um, email me or you know with any questions or you can leave something down below. I will respond, I do on a daily basis. Anyway, all of that being said, play with your paints, make yourself a custom palette, go out and have a great day, have a great week and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye guys.